Alright, so hello everyone, welcome to another Fluffy Groom tutorial. Um, today we'll be looking at the strand based rendering, which is the one you see here. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin with, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the renderer that we uh, have here. So remove component. Um, next, I'm gonna go to tools fluffy grooming tool fluffy groom tool window so we have the window opened here um, switch over to my scene view and disable this button up here so I don't get all the icons in the way so um, hit the strand preset button get a joke and then we have a shitload of hairs <laughs> so um, the thing I usually do first is select the mask brush and then remove all the hairs that I don't want but as you can see here it's I'm not really hitting all the strands that's because I haven't enabled the ignore normal slope check button so if I not uh, select that one it's much easier to hit all the all the strands also the inside of the mouth is much easier to hit but you can also see that I've uh, sort of masked out the back here so I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that one again and select show strands and paint them in again and then I'm gonna do the same thing here um, control left mouse button slide changes the si size of the brush Alright, so we have her only where we want it to be. Got here. Alright, then the other one. Show strands. Alright, so I guess we're good. Um, and then we, uh, I usually start by changing the height. Of the strands um, so in the face I probably don't want it to be this long so I'm gonna set the magnetic slider down to 0 0.2 and start painting I'm also gonna select the ignore normal slope check one again maybe a bit shorter actually Right, so it's pretty good. I see that I've missed some strands here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove those. All right, so and then for the rest of the body, like it to be a bit longer up top maybe on the sides as well and the arms are that's way too much so I'm just gonna go ahead and tune it down to something like that and start painting it's pretty good and then we got the, the feet 
Uh, all right, so that that's one thing that uh, that can be useful to know. As you saw that I I missed the character there and uh, it selected something else. That can be a bit annoying. So to fix that. We can go over here uh, and select lock selection. So now, when I click outside of the character, it's still gonna, it's still in paint mode, sort of. So that's that's very useful. All right, <laughs> we have a fluffy, fluffy little guy here, um, and then. Uh, what I usually do also is I pretty much always add a clump modifier because it's sort of um, sort of makes things look more natural uh, that's not very natural but um, we select the clump mask um, then set the magnitude to zero make sure the ignore normal slope check button is on it's gonna remove all the clumps and then I usually start painting in the areas that I want some clumps so set this the magnitude to one and then maybe I want some clumps here Maybe up top here and on the sides. And then you can go down here to the, the, the clump modifier and change the curve. So this changes how intense that the attraction is. So if I do this for instance, it's gonna be very intense towards the tip and then nothing at the root so maybe something like this and then we can start bending the strands all right so make it make the brush really large and then whoosh, add some gravity and then do the same with the arms alright so we got this one layer that's starting to look pretty pretty good um, so what we can do now is to just duplicate this layer by hitting this button and we're not gonna see anything until we actually change the size because it's just laid on top of the other one um, but what I usually do is to decrease the density of this one so that we can use this layer as sort of a, a detail uh, layer for the hairs um, or sort of strays I guess and then if I increase the height you can see it a bit better and then maybe delete the clump modifier because we actually don't need it that much since they're just strays it's gonna give us a bit, bit better performance and then we can for instance increase the subdivision count a bit so it's a bit much maybe something like 9 um, by increasing this the performance is going to go down but things usually start looking better um, so something like 9 is usually fine and then select the twist brush make sure twist hair strands is selected since we don't have a clump we remove that one and then yeah let's see start twisting the 
the strays. Maybe decrease the height a little bit and maybe increase the strands count a little bit. Alright, so now we see a lot of hair strands that are sort of adding a bit to the volume of the, the entire feel. Yes, yeah, so I guess this is starting to look pretty much like the groove we had uh, to begin with. Maybe decrease the, the clumping a bit on the front. And yeah, so you can just keep on playing with this, add more layers, um, maybe add some as I'm twisting to the to the clumps, you can do that by selecting twist and then use the twist clumps button over here. Yeah, you can override the color if you if you like to. Maybe choose something like uh, like that, like a blue bluish pink color. Start painting. This only works if you use a fluffy material. Uh, you can you can use whatever material you like with uh, with fluffy. You just have to assign it here on the fur render. Um, yeah. So, but in order for the the color override to work, you have to use a fluffy material um, or a material that supports vertex colors. Alright, so I guess that's it. Um, we have a, have a little little dude here that that's using strand based fur. That's that's really cool. Um, yeah, so thanks so much for for watching. Uh, there are other tutorials. Uh, like the one for uh, for car based fur, which is looks a bit different. Um, all right, see you guys in a, in another video.